Next up is Kresge eminent artist and photographer Lenny Sinclair, who was a leader in the 1960s and 70s countercultural movement and a vital documentarian of that movement and more. I've been an observer of the Detroit cultural scene since the 1970s, and Lenny Sinclair's work documenting jazz, rock, and the social changes, the social revolution, that work is simply irreplaceable. And I wanted to sit down with Lenny and talk about what was behind some of these iconic images she created. The MC5. It was definitely staged because we needed new uh, publicity photographs constantly to send out to the press and prospective uh, club owners. So I, with the in-house photographer, literally we lived together, so I was the in-house photographer for the band. <laughs> and so when they needed a new publicity photograph, we staged them like that. Now the idea of the, of the buttons, whose idea was that? Hmm, I don't, there's only two people still alive that might know, Wayne Kramer and Dennis Thompson, the drummer. And I don't really know, but I think it was my idea to use masking tape and tape them on their chest. Because the myth they spread, the myth that they stuck them in their skin, and people who have seen Iggy mutilate himself on stage with glass, they thought the MC5 stuck them in their chest. No, they weren't that self-mutilating. <laughs> we used tape. <laughs> we have John Coltrane, 1966, Drome Lounge, Detroit. Yeah. Tell me a little bit what was going on this night. I tried to take pictures every night, but it was very dark in there. There was almost no light, one little red light bulb over the stage. So to get any good shots, um, I didn't use a flash. I never used a flash back then, especially in a jazz club. I wouldn't dare have used a flash for John Coltrane, you know. Fela, Fela and Nicola Kuti, the uh, most famous singer of Africa. In America, still most people don't know who he, who he was. He passed away, uh, I don't really know when, but a while ago, and his fame, is getting bigger, he's getting more celebrated all over the world the longer he's dead. <laughs> That's being used uh, in Nigeria. I, I saw maybe two dozen t-shirts with my photo on it and they have it right on the shrine, the African shrine where Fela used to perform a huge dance song. They have it right on top of the building and uh, when I told people, you know, that's my photo, they kind of just about bow down to me. They love it. <laughs> I was a celebrity. In fact, the daily newspaper had me on the cover of their Sunday supplement, my four-page face of me saying, the woman who shot Fela. <laughs> For me, her art and what she did is not separate from the community at all. You know, so she was at a, you know, whether it was jazz, rock and rolls, blues, whatever, she, she did it all. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't say it was for her. It was all music and it sort of belonged to everybody. And that's kind of how she worked. And that's kind of also how she played and how she lived, um, which was, which was really cool. And it's also how she continues to live. And, 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 you know, she, she connects to in and everybody and she stays true to who she is. That's John Lennon and Yoko Ono performing at the John Sinclair Freedom Rally in Ann Arbor on December 10th, 1971. We had uh, organized a big benefit to get my husband, my ex-husband, John Sinclair, out of jail. He'd been in for two and a half years and we had filed appeal and appeal and got turned down. Then we decided to have a big concert and the headliner was supposed to be Bob Seger. He uh, was adamant that he wanted to play for John Sinclair. But 
uh, we picked Chrysler Wiener and Arbor, and it was all Michigan bands on the bill, so there was ticket sales were kind of slow. We were thought we were losing our shot on this one. And then John Lennon found out about John Sinclair and wrote that song, It Ain't Fair, John Sinclair. And then when he found out we had a benefit plan in this huge arena, um, he decided to come and headline the benefit. And we didn't raise a ticket price because of the Beatles. No, it was $3.50 a ticket, so it was sold out within hours after the announcement was made. And so they uh, played. Now the interesting part is that this happened Friday night on December 10th, and on Monday morning, December 13th, they let John out of Jackson prison. The coincidence of that happening three days later was such a powerful symbol that John and Yoko uh, were all enthusiastic about doing similar concerts all over the United States. They didn't take any money, they paid for all their own expenses, and they uh, wanted to leave all the money in the community distributed among the welfare rights people and the civil rights and all that. I think the story of the 1960s has been told so frequently, but it really was a maelstrom of politics and culture and essentially young people reinventing a world uh, based on ideas of freedom and liberation and new experiences. And it went everywhere from the idea of uh, what we used to say. We wanted a revolution. We wanted world socialist revolution and we wanted the age of Aquarius simultaneously. And one of the things that always struck me about Lenny, and it's more so in her photographs, is she was calmly in the midst of it documenting it. And the big word in the 1960s was now, with a big exclamation point. And yet she had an idea that this had to be recorded. And if, if we, and probably the cliche of, of uh, people not getting the credit that they deserve, it really is Lenny Sinclair. I mean, she is uh, underestimated, underappreciated, and all those other under words. And it's just wonderful that she's now getting the recognition that she deserves. Uh, the Berlin Wall, when the wall was broached in, on November 9th, 1989, and I was watching TV, I was all by myself in my little room watching TV, and I saw all that commotion at the Berlin Wall, and there was one woman that they focused on, and she looked so much like me. It was like a, like an epiphany. That should be me. I should be there. It was partially because of me they built this wall, and it, it, it's up to me to help tear it down. People like you wanted to be free from, from people that like me. Of East like about thirty thousand people per month fled from East Germany to go to the West before they built the wall, I was one of them, so I helped build the wall. <laughs> Responsible for them having to build a wall to stop the exodus in, in, before the country, you know, emptied out completely. Lenny Sinclair's work has really been about breaking down barriers, about capturing others when they break down barriers, whether it be artists, whether it be jazz musicians, rock musicians, social activists, and think about some of those images. She captures the musician, the artist, right at the moment of the creation when they're really the most free. And I think that's what she's trying to capture and share with us. The body of work is just an incredible gift to the city, to Detroiters, and really to the world.